Uh, what I'm planning to do today, um, I'm going to use some of the PowerPoints to go through the next section because they really, he does a great job outlining it. I want to do the problems as usual. Um, and uh, so today, there's two things I want to cover. Section 3, or section 4-3 is all about the standard deviation, or sorry, the variance of the actual sample size, of the samples, all right, not the sample mean. Then we're going to get into confidence intervals. Did anybody look through this at all? Anybody at all? Anybody look at the problems? You looked at the problems? Oh, um, section 3-7, right? Can we ask us to read? Section 4, isn't it? Isn't it 4-3, right? Yeah, 4-3, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, the sample varies. It's all right. Don't worry about that. All right, so I'm going to just give you an overview, and then I'm going to use some PowerPoints, and I'm going to say one other thing about this. When we get into the actual, uh, the, the probability or the density functions for the sampled mean, and we talk about the confidence we have in the sample being, mean being a reflection of the, I'm sorry, not sample, of the sample variance being a reflection of the true variance. This is where it gets interesting. So first, I just want to, you don't need to write this down, I just want to bring everybody up to speed. So in section 4-2, this is all about something called the sample mean. You don't need to write this down, but I'm just trying to be clear about this. So in general, if you have a population, and I'm going to just show this, we have a population of n here, of anything it's large. And we're going to take a subset of that, and this is going to be n. This is our sample. And there's a couple of things that can happen. One is that that population is so large or it's continually being created that our sample will not perturb the statistics of the overall population. You all with me on that? Now, if that's the case, then if we look at the and first, I better define this. When we talk about the sample mean, there's a statistical function. It's the actual, this is, is the statistical value of this. So if you have a bunch of samples, and capital X of I is any given sample in there. It is still a random variable. Do you all follow me on this class? This is important we distinguish this. If we take this and we take uh, I, sorry, I equal 1 to n, 1 over n. This is called the sample mean, and it is a random variable. Now, the expected value of that sample mean is the true mean of the population. Here, x, and he designates all this in his PowerPoint, is the true mean. I'm, I'm kind of going through this as a review. Does everybody remember seeing this before? That's the true me. We keep going on this, and now we take a look at the variance of the sample mean. So this is the variance of sample mean. And he has it as this, it's V-A-R, and he'll have it as X bar hat. Now what that really is, is sigma X bar hat right here squared. That's what we would symbolize it. With sigma squared is variance. The sub, the, you might say the subscript there, indicates what it's the variance of. It's the sample mean. Same thing here. This is equal to sigma squared over N, where sigma is the true standard deviation. Maybe sigma squared is the true uh, variance. And this is true if n much greater than capital N, and we don't, no worries about destructive testing. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like this. Now that's true, and then we also found out from last time if we have any kind of destructive testing and we have a fixed sample size, like 100 resistors and we take 30 of them, all right, and we don't replace them, then we find we get a variance 
of, that's the variance of the mean. This is hard sometimes to get a handle on. You know, there's a mean value there. That's, it's a random variable. Now we're talking about the variance of that mean statistically. And this, I'll just put sigma, I like doing it this way, squared. And this now will have sigma squared over n times capital N minus n over capital N minus 1. We did problems with all these. And this is uh, destructive testing, or samples not replaced. And you can say destructive testing. And we, we talked about that, right? Now, if we have a large number of samples, if n is large, and I'm just going to give you a preview where we're going. If we looked at this, if n is large, thirty or more. I don't know where they get 30 from, but this is a standard thing. 30 or more is large. You know how in electromagnetics, you all had EMAG 1 and 2? All right, remember they said if a wave, the, if the wavelength is a tenth of a wavelength or greater, we could use transmission line models. If it was a tenth of a wavelength or less, we can't. Well, why a tenth of a wavelength? Because that's about where you start getting terrible fall off in the actual wave, in the transmission line behavior. If you go anything less than a tenth of a wavelength, wires start looking like just wires. They don't look like transmission lines. And the mathematics are something that well beyond anything you guys need to worry about. But it's not a hard, fast rule. What we're really talking about is that value is like uh, about the 50% point. Less than that, and all of a sudden the characteristic impedance is about 50 per, I mean, at that point, 50 percent what it would be normally, and then it falls off very rapidly. Here, why 30? Probably because the Gaussian statistics are within about 95 percent of what they should be if uh, n is 30. That's the only thing I can make of it, all right? And I'm not going to say, and this has to do with the central limit theorem. I kind of skipped over that, but I'll, I think I mentioned it. You all remember anything about the central limit theorem? In your own words, how many remember hearing it? Anybody? No. All right, well, I'll go over it. Here's what the central limit really theorem says. Doesn't matter the statistics of the individual components. If you have samples of anything out there that are statistically independent, if you take a large number of samples and you looked at the density function for either, it could be the sum of them, or it could be any other feature of them, and you wanted to know something about those values statistically, of the sum, difference, whatever, if a large number of samples is out there, regardless of the individual density function of, of them, if you add them together, like we, we did the classic z is equal to x plus y. Do you all remember that? Well, if you have x plus y plus all the other alphabet numbers, add them together, and then you got the density function out thing, it will become a Gaussian. All right. That's the central limit theorem. There's proofs for it. I have a simulation I did on it. I didn't show you guys, but it does work. And I never even looked into this, but you know, my hero's Gauss. I think I've said this before. Didn't I in this class or not? Gauss is the guy that came up with so many things, and he didn't have computers. He had paper, pen, or pencil, and he's a genius, and he came up with all this. So anyway, back to this. For n large, when it gets large, 30 or more, everything falls into Gaussian statistics. And then what you're going to find is, if we looked at the density function, now this is not in your book, but I'm going to do this. And I'm just going to go of the mean value. Remember, that's a statistical mean. Then you're going to get something like this. It, uh, really, don't, you don't know what it's going to look like, but it's going to have a Gaussian profile. And there will be the true mean value. This would be the true mean here. And it will look like that. It will look Gaussian if n is large. Do you all follow me on this? And it really doesn't matter how many samples are in that sample space. If you take a look at it, this would be the density function. This is the value of that x mean. All right? So keep that in mind. All the stuff we covered in section 4-2 has to do with the variance of the sample mean and 
the value of the sample me. Everybody with me on this? And you all remember that, you all remember these formulas, right? We covered? All right, now we're going in the next section. I'm going to give you a preview, then I'm going to go to the PowerPoints. Next section is kind of interesting. Did anybody read this or look through it at all? Anybody at all? One? Did you or not? All right, this is now about the variance of the samples. So now we're going to talk about these samples. And I'm trying to just set the stage. I'll get to the PowerPoint. And then I want to do problems as usual. I feel that doing problems is the single best way to see this stuff. I don't think just abstract discussions without applications, it's going to stick with you. And I'll challenge you. Work these with me in class. See if you can. So now this is section 4-3. Now we're talking about that subset of values. Now we have n values. And the total population is still, is still equal to n. All right. And we take a look at this. We're going to take a look at something called S. And I think in his book he has S, I think S1 tilde squared. Let me just be sure about this because the symbols, I, I'm not familiar, I don't use these symbols. In my in radar work, I have other, there's other symbols. So in S, uh, in the book it's just S squared. all right, for S squared, it's going to be equal to, and this is a standard formula. This is standard, this is the sample variance. And before I even go there, let me just do this. When you talk about anything, either the mean value or you talk about the variance, whenever we talk about the mean value of anything, it is the expected value of that variable. Now, E is just expected value. You all with me? If it's a continuous variable, it would be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x, f of x, dx, where f of x would be the probability density function. If it wasn't a, uh, a continuous random variable, then this thing is going to be 1 over n, the summation of xi, i equals from 1 to n, and it would be the average value of all those. You all with me on this? This is continuous. This is going to be discrete points. You all with me? How many see this at least? I, before I just, because some of this stuff is going to come at you real fast, and I want to make sure you see it. Now, how do I get, if I wanted the second moment of this, the expected value of the second moment, right? Well, that's the expected value of x squared, right? Isn't it, class? If it's continuous, how do you get it? Well, it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared f of x dx. Do you agree with me? And that's the second moment. All right. Now, if it is continuous, I'm sorry, discrete, please just watch this one point I'm making. Because you're going to have a little, people trip over these discrete type of methods. All right. Discrete methods are the same thing as continuous methods. But if we look at the average value, we get a whole bunch. We just sum them up and divide by the number. All right. If we're looking for the second moment of a whole bunch of them, then we simply go ahead, this would be for continuous, it would be the sum of x of i squared from i equals 1 to n, 1 over n. It's the average value of the square of the actual variable. You all with me, class? All right. Now, what happens here if we wanted to know sigma squared and we have the mean squared value and we have the average value? Do you remember? What is this always going to be? It's the mean squared value minus, minus the average value squared. Right. You all remember that? This is real important that you see how this seamlessly works. Now, for discrete values, we would take this as this value. We have to square it. And then for this, we take this value. If we have continuous variables, we would take that for this, and for this one, 
we would use this. You all with me on that? Now something that's very important to appreciate, if the average value is zero, then the standard deviation, or say the variance, is equal to the really second moment or the, ex the squared value, expected value of the squared. You all with me? Just to put everything in perspective. So here when we go into this, we're going to have a subset of the population, and we want to know the sample variance. All right, now this, from that, this should make perfect sense, I hope. So the variance, remember, I could say that this is what? This would be the expected value of x minus x bar squared, right? Do you all agree with that? So here, it's going to be 1 over n, the summation of i equals 1 to n. And here you put in um, the actual value of x minus x bar hat squared. I think he, he uses this form of it. And I'm going to say one thing. In his book, what he does, if you all follow me on this, this is going to be i, sub i. This is a, a constant there. You all with me, class? Now, when you go ahead and you break that out, you're going to get, and I'm not going to do the whole thing, uh, this is going to be 1 over n, and then you're going to get a summation from i equals 1 to n, and it'll be of x of i squared, and it's going to be minus 2x of i, oops, sorry, minus 2, and then it's going to be x bar hat times the summation i equal 1 to n of x of i. And then it's going to be minus, uh, and I forgot I should, no, I, I got the 1 over n out there. That's right. And then it's going to be a plus, pardon me, uh, just the summation of x bar hat i equals 1 to n. Uh, it's that squared. Okay, you're going to get this, and I just try to break it out for you. I'm going to discuss this, and I'm want, trying to make sense of this whole mess, okay? When you look at this right here, remember when you take a look at this, this is going to be just a constant value. So it's really n times x bar squared, but it's divided by n. It's x bar squared. Make sense to everybody? This one right here, this is the average value of these things, and then it's divided by n, so it is, in fact, this. With me on this? Now, this is the true mean. This is the um, random variable. But it would be this x bar squared, it's, but this is x bar hat squared, and this would be the actual standard, or it would be the second moment of the random variable. Now, I'm not going to to go too much into D, but just appreciate what this amounts to. After all is said and done, then you can get the expected value, just listen to me on this one, of S1 tilde squared. All right, the expected value of all that that I just put down. They, they said in the book it's a tedious proof. That's probably an understatement. So I was messing around with this. All that stuff has sums, right? To get the expected value, what do you have to do? Then you have to take each one of these things and sum them out over the number and divide by n again. And then do the multiplication. It's a big mess, but you'll see that it actually does reduce to this at the end of the day. In his book, he has this thing comes down to, do, 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 do. yeah, at the end of the day, you turn the crank, do the whole thing, you get this equal to n minus 1 over n times sigma squared. Now, the point of this, and this is actually a lot of manipulation, all right? This is the true mean, or true, sorry, true variance. You all with me on this? Of the population. This is a sample size. As n gets large, you notice that the actual expected value of the sample standard deviation becomes the expected value of the populations, not just standard, the variance. You follow me on this, guys?
I'm really just trying to hit these points as necessary and not spend too much time on them because we're going to go to where we need to go. But this is a biased estimate. And it is bad. Now, if n is large, here's the deal. What we'd like is the estimate of the variance of the population to be equal to sigma squared, not n minus 1 over n. But you see, as n gets very large, it's about right, right? However, for small values of n, like 3, 4, 5, you can see that this is quite a bit different. You all with me? And it, normally what they do in these lot testings that something's coming off the production line continuously. Say they take 100 at a time, and they're going to test three or four. And they try to get the statistics that reflect you know, how many samples fail or pass or meet the spec based on that. That's a small number. There's a lot of tricks to this. All right, that's bias. So what we use is an unbiased estimate, or an unbiased, uh, it's called the uh, variance. This is an unbiased variance. All right, just look at this. How would you get an unbiased variance? Just take a look. We'd like it to be equal to sigma squared. Well, if that is the expected value of this, what if we just take the expected value and we multiply it by n over n minus 1? It gets rid of that problem, doesn't it, class? So. Here's the one we do it, the unbiased variance. And can you tell me where this is in the book? 167? Yeah. It's a so if you look on page 167, we find that this is the unbiased estimate. And it is, um, I'll just put it down. It's really capital N minus 1. I hope this is the one they have where n's the population size over n over n minus 1 times the s1 squared. And I'm calling this s1 here. So y'all, does he have that formula? He has that one for a small population. Yeah, it, OK, that's true. Small population, you're right. What is it for a large population? Uh, it's the same thing minus the terms. It's just n over n minus 1 times s1 squared, right? Yeah. And now, OK, at this point, I'm just going to say something. I'm going to go to the PowerPoints only for, to get this stuff out there without me filling the board up with things. So I'm going to say one other thing. We're going to find the variance of this. And this is important. The variance, write this down, of s squared. So this is the variance. It's a little hairy here. The samples have a variance, s squared. They have a standard deviation, which would be s. With me? Or this is the unbiased, right? Now, if we looked at the density function, the probability density function for s squared, that's the sample's variance, we would get some curve. It would be a probability density function for that value. And we have the possible values of s on the horizontal axis, the density function here. There's a variance of the variance. Do you all follow me? This gets a little, if anybody, did anybody read this at all? Did you read it back there? You see how it gets a little, why are you telling me this? <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So the variance of this itself, and I'm just going to take you, I'm not even going to try to prove this thing. Um, yeah, this is going to be equal to, and he should have this. You've got to tell me where this is. This is going to be n over n minus 1 squared. This is taking care of that bias business. And then it's going to be u to the fourth minus sigma squared. I've got to say something about this. u to the fourth is the fourth central moment. OK? So this is the variance of the variance of the sample size, which you can see doesn't make a whole lot of sense until you put it in context and do problems. I start reading this stuff, and I'm just trying to think of a good way to explain it. 
Yeah. And the buffy has sigma to the fourth. What's that? Sigma to the fourth power it has to be fourth power. I'm sorry about that. Look, variance. It's. Uh, I mean, if we look at s squared, it's of the order of. It's going to have a function of sigma squared. You all with me? The variance of that is going to be another squaring power. So it's going to be sigma squared squared or sigma to the fourth. It has to be of the order of sigma to the fourth. The units will be that way. You all with me, in class? All right. Now I'm going to do the PowerPoint. Then I'm going to do the problems. Some of them require MATLAB, but let me get this hooked up, and then we'll see if I can make sense of this. I was debating whether I was going to use this, but I figure just because it's so well done and you'll have it uh, available to you, I'm going to use it. I'll ask for the lights to be turned off in a second, but uh, this is the variance of the sample mean. All right, we, this is section 4-2 we already talked about. Going to go through it kind of quick. So here, hold on. Uh, this goes through... At the end of the day, you all see the bottom one that's highlighted right there? Remember, that is the variance of x. Now, x is a random variable that's the mean value of the samples. You all with me on that class? All right, take a look at that. We've already done that. Now, what he tries to show you here, if you have, hey, how many have looked at these slides, by the way? OK, if you look at them, he does a great job. What he's doing is showing you. Here, the true variance is 2,500, and he shows you when you have a sample of three, what the actual sample mean is, and a sample of 30, and it becomes more and more constant, very, li very little change. Now, next one, he shows you uh, this one has a, sample, or a standard deviation of 9.13. It's the square root of the variance. The first one is 28.87, which is significant. Uh, then, uh, w this is for destructive testing, I just put it up there. Do you all remember that? I'm going through this sequentially. He gives a great example. We did this example in class. Do you all remember that? For the reverse current, forward current stuff? All right. Uh, so, he, anyway, we did this problem. I'm just going through it. Then uh, this is going to be, without replacement, we use this formula. I've mentioned that just a second ago. I'm trying to go through these. You did that homework, right? All right. He's showing you that uh, we've got a uh, thousand resistors, and this is how uh, the resistor number versus the actual value. And obviously, he's trying to show you something that would be mean real, uh, have, have some real meaning to you. If we were just numbering these things, these resistors, and plotting the value, we take one, the first value, this, and this is what it looked like, you might say, as a function of time, or the time we actually sampled each one. What is the variance of three resistors? And that's, now this is the sample variance. This is important. So we've got a sample size of resistors, and we're looking at the variance of the samples. That's what I was trying to put up there. You all with me? Both X, Xi is a random variable, and X bar hat is a random variable. Can you follow me on this? All right. When I take a look down there, this is the point I was making. The estimate of the population variance is biased. And it's n over n minus 1. If you only take 3, you got 3 minus 1 is 2 over 3. 2 thirds the actual. That's significant. You all follow me on this, guys? It's significant. Instead, what he, do, what he does is you take n over n minus 1 times that, and you get this. And that is the sample variance after you take care of the, the implicit bias in there. And keep going on this. Therefore, the Expected value of S squared is the actual variance of the population. That's this point, my point earlier. So if you look at this as a sample variance for n equal 3, and he's just plotting versus the trial number, he's got 100 different things. And you can see for only n equal 3, it's all over the place. And then for n equal 30, now just take a look at the difference in those two. That's n equal 3. Peak values of around 9,000, minimum of almost 0. Now these peak values of about 5,000, minimum values of about 1,000. It's starting to tighten up very fast. Follow me, guys? He's just making his point. That's a sample. 
So here's the variance of the sample variance I was trying to tell you. I, ha I hate to do PowerPoints, but it's very well done here. I want to do problems. You all with me? I've put that up there. Do you all remember that? That u to the fourth is the fourth central moment. It's important to know it's a central moment. Sigma to the fourth power is really just the variance of the actual population, the fourth power. And then you got n over n minus one. And that takes care of the bias and everything. That's important. Now, you're writing it down. You'll be seeing this over and over again. You go ahead and write it down, but it's in the slides. Just underscore this is important. I promise you it's in the book. It's in the slides. We're going to be using it in the problems left and right. All right? Remember, the variance of the sample variance. I hope you guys are paying attention. This formula is only valued, valid when n is much, much greater than the sample size. Measure of how much the sample variance fluctuates. And, and, hold on. Yeah, how much the sample variance fluctuates. So small, smaller the variance of the variance, the better. That's the idea on this. So next, uh, he, he talks about higher order central moments. I want you to just pay attention to this one. I mentioned, I didn't put that up here, but this is important. You remember if we have a Gaussian random variable and we take a look at the expected value of x minus x to the uh, minus x bar, which is the average value to the nth power, that's called the moment or the central moment. I'm sorry, central moment, right? When n is odd, it's always zero. Do you all remember that for Gaussian? And for n even, then it's one times three times five times whatever the largest value of n is minus one, such that n minus one is going to be positive. To, and then it's sigma to the nth. Now that's the central moment that we need. If it's uniform, please pay attention to this next one, it's important. If you have a uniform density function, the probability density function is constant over some range. Now remember, a central moment subtracts off the mean. You all with me? So it's, if we look at the density function for x minus x bar, all right, and, and take any moment of it, it's uniform from minus delta x to plus, I mean delta x over 2 to plus delta x over 2, and the height would just be 1 over delta x. Does this make sense to everybody? The density function would be 1 over delta x. Now, the nice thing is the odd central moments of this are 0 if it's a, a, if, if it's a uniform density in unchanging values of the probability density function. Then he goes down to give you a nice little formula that he proves here. And you don't have to remember this one. You can always find it by going ahead and doing the math. You can always take the, if you wanted like this, uh, this variance, all right, the, of anything. And you can always take, or you can find this, uh, the uh, value, expected value of the square of the function minus the expected value, uh, or really, minus the mean value squared, and you will get this. But this formula breaks it down. I hope you can see that. It's really just delta x, that's the spread in the horizontal axis, divided by 2 over n plus 1 to the 2n. And that always works, by the way, and we'll see that. Sometimes I just work out that uh, value. But that is, that is going to be sigma squared of the, for a uniform density function. So. Here is how you compute, and I have examples of this. Uh, how do you compute the value of s squared? Now we got a sample, right? We got n values. How do you compute the value of that? Well, each one of these values of x is some given number. You all with me on that? So if you just add up, I mean, add the squares of that, multiply by n, minus, and then this would be the value of it's really going to be the average value squared of the sample. That's the average value of the sample, not a random variable. It's the average value of the sample divided by n over n minus 1. You get s squared. And this is just saying that that is this right here, squared. Or, and he puts it in a concise form. At that point, I think I have an ex I'm going to give you an example. Well, I'll do this. It's with the problems. Now, I, did, I didn't do this one. I did another one. Let me... Um, in the book, and I did it with MathCAD, can you take a look at problem 4-3.1? My man's not here that usually gives me the reading, but he is. Take a look at 4-3.1, and he's going to say, go look at problem 4-2.1. That's what he's going to say. 
in problem 4-2.1, hear me now, he gave you all these values. You see it? Yes. Sir. So he's saying, if you, got, if you got access to this online, go ahead. He says, these are all the values, and we're going to talk about this. So first, what's the mean of all these values? These would be the sample mean, not the statistical. You know, it's not the, ver the uh, statistical variable sample mean. It's just add them all up and divide by the number. The number is 9. So when we take the mean of this, and, and MathCAD has a function, it's 0.373, and I believe that's right. I looked this up. You all with me, class? All right, so then he says, well, what is S squared? Now, this is going to be the standard deviation of the samples. You all with me on this, everyone? I mean, that's the, the variance of the samples. So here, I've got to sum up the squared values. And again, I'm using, uh, let me see, show you the formula I'm going to use right here. I'm going to use this formula. I should have just cut and pasted that. You with me, Clep? Maybe I can right now. So this is what I'm going to use to do this. And that's right here. So I take a value. This is just the squared values of all the things right there. You all with me, class? Squaring each value of x and then adding them together. This is minus n times the mean. We've got the mean right here of the samples. With me? These are all things that are right there in the sample set. Then I divide by n minus 1. n is 9. Uh, yeah, and I get this. You all with me? Now, that is the variance of the samples. Follow me? You got n different values. That's the variance of that. And again, it's just taking the second moment minus the, the expected value, the second moment, uh, or the second moment minus the average value squared. That's all this is right here. With me? All right, pay attention to this. Now we're going to find the variance of that. Now that's here. Can you all see where my cursor is, class? Can you see it back there? Now, where does that come from? I'm going to paste that in here, too. Um, I don't know if you guys use this function, but it, 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 it's really nice. Now we're going to use this one. Uh, put it, I'll put it right there. So now, now we want to find, and that's what I'm using right here, where that cursor is. I hope you can see it. Can you all see this? I want to find the variance of that sample variance. <laughs> it it, it kind of irritates me, but that's the lingo. So it's the variance of the, remember, sample variance itself will be statistical, right? You're going to have a statistical distribution. This is the variance of that. And that's equal to n over n minus 1 squared. And this is, he does, I don't think he does a whole proof on this. It takes some time to work this out, but it does work. Times u to the fourth, that's the fourth central moment minus sigma squared, or sigma to the fourth, that's really the variance squared there, the actual variance. Now this begs the question, I think some of you can appreciate this. If you know the value of sigma of the population, why are we doing this? If you actually know the value of the sigma of the population, or I should say the standard deviation of the pop, why are we doing this? It's coming up. What we're going to see is there's going to come a point where we don't know and then we can estimate based on the values we have within a probabilistic distribution. That's the reason we're doing all this. So for now, we assume it, okay? We assume we have access to this. And that's what this is. So the variance of this one, now look at that problem. Doesn't he ask for problem, this is 4-3.1, he asked for the um, sample variance, right? Um find the sample variance if an unbiased estimator is used. Yes, so this is the sample variance. Can anybody, can you see if that answer is right? I, I'm sure it is, because I, I did this last night. I think I checked it. I think it's 0.61 something, but it's, I mean, 0.061. Yeah, yeah, right. All right, you with me, class? Just a strict mathematical formula. Somebody's going to ask me, are you going to provide the formulas? For these, some of these I will. Yeah, I'll show you what I'm going to provide. <laughs> somebody being him. <laughs> All right, you ready? Now, this is the variance of the variance. Anybody, now look at this. Here's the sample variance. It's what? About 6 times 10 to the minus 2, right? Look at the variance of the variance. It's 10 to the minus 3. It's one order of magnitude less. Do you all follow me? Roughly. It's actually a little more than that, right? Can you all follow me on this? It's at least one order of magnitude less. 
So a, a logical question is how many samples would you need to get it within any percent of the actual value? You all follow me in this? We did this with the variance of the mean value. Do you all remember? So that's the next logical question. I'm going to jump out of here and go back to my slides because I'm going to do some. Anyway, uh, this is something, remember the variance of the mean is just sigma squared over n, assuming you know sigma, right? Then, and these are problems I gave you for homework, I'm gonna do them in a second, but I just wanna, I wanna take, give you a shot at something here. Just listen up, I'm gonna make this point, I'm gonna do some problems afterwards, but you need to listen, it's real important. Remember, the variance of the variance, right? That means the actual variance itself of the samples is a statistical distribution. Do you all follow me on this? It will look Gaussian if the number of samples are large. Over 30, just use 30. Now, if we know it's Gaussian, and we want to know the probability that the variance is within, say, 10% of the real variance, or any percentage, then we take and we use the characteristic function and based on the mean value and the actual standard deviation. I'm going to show you this, but I'm trying, it should at least click in the back of your mind, you might not see everything, but yeah, that makes sense. If we know it's Gaussian in nature and we know the mean and we know the standard deviation of that variance, the, all right? In other words, we know the variance, the variance and the mean value. This is getting kind of crazy until you see it. Then we can go ahead and figure out the probability of it being within so much of the actual variance. You're going to have to just see this. So he has this, he poses this. Suppose we use n equals 225 and compute the sample mean. All right, now he's going to the mean. Are we, uh, are we guaranteed that our value is within 2% of the true mean? And he makes the case, no. No, we're not. All right. What is the probability that the, act, that the actual statistical random variable mean is within 2% of the true mean? We need a PDF. This should be clear to you. You need a density function in order to do this. Remember that term Gaussian, large number of samples. So you're not responsible for this. this is the next, I mean, not yet anyway, but this is the next. So in, the case, in this case, the sample is large. It's greater than 30. And the central limit theorems tells us that the actual distribution of the mean value, here that's a mean value. It's a statistical variable, but it's a mean value. Can you all follow me? It's not the sample mean value. It's, it's Gaussian, regardless of what the PDFs of X of I are. That's nice. Recall from the previous slide, that's the actual mean value. And this is the variance. We did both of these. Um, back in section 4-2, right? Now, that, what, what's the one assumption in this part right here? It's not destructive testing, right? We have something where we're not worried about having to replace the stuff. You all with me on this class? Uh, so we have sigma squared over, it's like you could test one, throw it back in a population, test another, and just shake the box, pick another one. So that would allow this test to be true. So this right here is the very, it's the variance of the sample mean is that. But if we want the probability that this variance is within 2% of the true mean, now here's where you got to follow me on this, guys, just bear with me. So if we have something where we have a statistical distribution for the actual value of x bar hat, all right, it's going to, the, the true mean would be the most probable value of that. Do you all follow me on this class? So the expected value of the sample mean will be the true mean, but it's going to have a variation. So if we want to know what the probability that you're within 2% of the true mean, if the true mean on this one is 10, then if you go 1% below that, 1% above it, and find the probability that the values of x bar hat are within that, that would be the probability of being within 2%. Does this make sense to everybody? Just think about it. So what is 99% uh, of 10? Or not 90, 98% because it's 2%. So it's 9.8, right? But actually what do you have to do here? 
you've got to take um, the, the actual spread here, and we've got to divide it by the standard deviation. Remember how you always had x minus x bar over the standard deviation in order to do this class? Do you all remember that back when you used characteristics functions? So here, you're going to take the value of, and this is the characteristic function of 10.2 minus 10 over 0.2. So that's above it, minus the characteristic function of 9.8 minus 10 over 0.2 below it, and you're going to get it. I've got to mention one other thing here. I don't know if he shows us he doesn't. So see how this is the variance of the samples right here? That's like sigma squared, right? When you take x minus x bar over sigma, you've got to take the square root of that. Square root of 0.04 is going to be 0.2. You all with me? That's where this comes from here, 0.2 and 2. This slide's important. You'll see it apply. So anyway, the bottom line is there's only a 68% chance that the sample mean is within 2% of the true mean based on the values that we use there, 225 for the number of samples. I'm just giving you a picture of what's coming. Can you all follow me? We're going to say we're going to get to this confidence interval, and what I just showed you is going to play a big part in that, but you have to see it over and over again. So next, I'm going to do the problems, and i got at least 15 minutes. Uh, and I'm going to do them without this thing. All right, so I'm going to take this up, and I just need you to follow me on this. If you didn't do them, please work with me on this. Did you post the new ones? Huh? The four dash ones, did you post those? They should be up there, 4 dash, I mean, 3, 4 dash 3.1, 4 dash 3.2, 4 dash 3.3, and we're going to do 4 dash 3.4, even though he doesn't do it in the solutions manual. I did this last night. It's a good problem, and it's not bad either. And the thing is, you can use the uh, Laplace transform thing to really cut through the chase on that one. That's one of the few problems he didn't do in the, or whoever did them didn't do it in the solutions manual. It's a good problem, though. Hey, it's a good problem. 4-3.4. 4 3.4. Four. Four There's no solution in the book, so you'll have to pay attention. Where was I? Uh, four, we did 4 3.1, right? 4 3.2. Please work with me on this one. I don't think it requires a calculator, I mean, a computer. Go ahead. Uh, a zero mean Gaussian random time function is sampled so as to obtain independent sample values. How many sample values are required to obtain an unbiased estimate of the variance of the time function with a standard deviation that is 2% well, well, Unbiased true. estimate of the variance, right? So it's expected value of sigma squared, right? Um, of the time function with a standard deviation that is 2% of the true variance. All right, so we got, this is for the estimate, a standard deviation that is 2% of the true variance. Okay, okay, so that means it's 0 0.02 <coughs> sigma <coughs> squared. Bless you. It has to be squared because this is a standard deviation. We have to square that in order to get use this as an estimate of this, right? And they want an estimate of this, just this, right? Um, how many samples are trying to be obtain? careful about yeah. this? Yeah. How many samples, sample values are required to obtain an unbiased estimate of the variance of the time function with a standard deviation that's two percent of the true variance? Okay. So I'm going to put down two things before I continue on this one. First, if we want the variance of S squared samples, that's going to be equal to n over n minus 1 squared u to the fourth minus sigma to the fourth. This is the variance of that. When we talk about the estimate of this, and this is going to be uh, n, I better be careful about this. Yeah, it's a large number, right? So I don't need the capital N business, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, gotta be careful. He doesn't say sample variance. Just sample values. Well, that is the, the expected value of, of S squared, right? Let me actually read that. Something about that that's bugging me, the way he said that. The expected value of the variance, n over n minus 1 times the actual biased value, this should be, take a look at what I just looked, n minus 1 over n, right? And it's just times sigma squared. Isn't that right, what I had there? <laughs> n, n minus 1 over n sigma squared, yes. Oh, this one. This one, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now he says that this is going to be, um, he says within 2% of that? With a standard deviation that is 2% of the true variance. That is 2% of the true variance, so I think so. The wording in this one's a little puzzling. This is the estimate of S squared is N minus 1 over N sigma squared. That's an estimate. You want that, that estimate to be within 2% of the, oh, the, all right, so we don't need this. What we need is this. We have, um, I'm sure this is going to have this. The variance of S squared to right here will be N over, it makes sense now, squared times U to the fourth minus sigma to the fourth here or central moment, and this has to be equal to, what this is the variance of this, and he wants this variance of this to be basically, it's going to be with the, the variance itself he wants of that to be 0.02 sigma squared. So this is going to be 0 0.02 sigma, and it's going to be that squared but it's going to be, let's see, that's squared squared. <laughs> You're going to have to read this problem carefully. What he's really saying is this, is, this is the variance of the variance, and he wants that to be 0 0.02 sig. Wouldn't it be just a sigma? It'd be 0 0.02 sigma squared, and then all of that squared, because it's 0 0.02 from the variance. No, a standard deviation, I think. Isn't it? It wants With it to be a standard deviation that is 2% of the true variance. 2% of the true variance. Oh, yeah. oh, standard deviation. I'm sorry. What you just said is right. It should be this, like that. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. The wording gets a little tedious. I'm sorry about that. I thought he was going back to this thing, but he didn't give us that. So if you take a look at this one, this I'm sure this is the right value, and you've got the solution. So here, you're going to get n over n minus 1 squared. And then it's u to the fourth. And here, I'll, I'll leave it as u to the fourth. Minus sigma to the fourth equals, let's see. Then we got 0 0.02 squared and then sigma to the fourth here. Now, u to the fourth, this is a Gaussian random variable. And therefore, and it's got zero mean, the fourth central moment be one times three and times sigma to the fourth. So that's three times sigma to the fourth for this one. Sorry about really juggling this one. But you all follow me, that's the fourth central moment there. If it's Gaussian, with me class? So here, I can go ahead and now we can play the game. And I think this is right. I have n, n over n minus one square, and then you're going to have uh, 3 to the sigma to the fourth minus sigma to the fourth over, yeah, that's right, and that's 0 0.02, so it's really 2 times 10 to the minus 2 squared sigma to the fourth. I'm going to stop before, right there. The only thing I'm doing is expanding that and I want to go through this one part. At that point, I'm going to get rid of the sigma to the fourth because they appear in every term, if you don't mind. Follow me, guys? Just going to get rid of them. Also going to do one thing. Three minus one is two. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to put two here, and I think you guys got this now. Two there. That gets rid of this. 
When I go ahead and square that out, I get 4 times 10 to the minus fourth there. And then now, at this point, it really, let's say I divide by 2 on both sides. Now I get n over n minus 1 squared is equal to, and that's just 2 times 10 to the minus fourth. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invert this, take 1 over everything. So I have n minus 1 squared over n equal to, flip that, that's 1 half times 10,000, or it's 5,000. It should be 5,000. And I get this. Oh, you all with me? I mean, I'm just modifying this to solve for n. Follow me on this? Just take 1 over everything. Now multiply by n. Then square it out, I have n squared minus, and this is going to be 2n plus 1 equals to 5,000n. Take that to the other side. You get n squared minus 5,002n plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to tell you this, this right here is going to be about 5,000. Now here's how I know it. Forget that one for a second. What's the solution of that? N is equal to about 5,002, right? You all follow me? With that one there, it doesn't change hardly anything. Is the value of N about 5,000 on this one? Yeah, he says N is 5,002. 5,000? 5, 5,002. I mean, you can, 5,002. All right, you can solve by taking, you know, the quadratic formula and solving for that. But it's about 5,000, just because the values, that coefficient right there is so much larger than the constant. It's about 5,002. You can check it. You all with me? OK. What's the next part of that problem? I'm sorry. That was it? Oh, yeah. Just thinking how you, the, you wrote Gaussian and then that equals point zero. Why did you? What's that? What is that you wrote at the very top? What is the all right, in the problem, do you, can you look at the problem? It says, with a standard deviation, that is 2% of the true variance. So he's saying the true variance you take 2% of, and that is what the standard deviation is of, <laughs> of this. You've got to square it, in other words. Okay, but the, the squared was only supposed to be on the sigma part, right? Yeah, because that's what's the 2%. It's 2% variance. Right. Okay. Isn't that the wording? The I guess I was just still confused when you standard deviation is 2% of the variance. Boy, this is sad. It, it's a, a little mind-numbing. So, because <laughs> your you, standard deviation and variance are related by the square. But he's saying the actual standard deviation of this yeah. is 2% of the variance, the true variance. Now, one of the things that's always bugged me about this, well, if you know that, why are we doing this? If you know the true variance, but he's, you don't need the variance in this case if you're just looking for how close you are to the true variance if it's Gaussian. Because then you know what the fourth central moment is because you know it's 1 times 3 times sigma to the fourth. You know that then. If you didn't, you couldn't do that very well. All right, next problem. I want to get this done. I'm sorry. 4-3.3. What's that? 4-3.3. Yeah. It uh, is. Oh. Give me one second. And I appreciate you guys bearing with me on this one. The wording on this is a little clumsy. And I ran to Adil Bashir yesterday and said his students hated the problems, some of the problems in this book because of it. Go ahead. 4 3.3. It is desired to estimate the variance of a random phase angle that is uniformly distributed over a range of 2 pi. All right, so this is has 1 over 2 pi, and this is f of theta of theta. So that's the density function for that. Uniform. You all agree with that? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Find the number of independent samples that are required to estimate this variance with a standard deviation that is 5% of the true variance if an unbiased estimate is used. So we want the variance of the sample, right? In other words, we're going to, it's the formula we just were using. The variance of the sample. So it's real. I mean, variance of the variance of the sample. Sorry. It's going to be this. 
I, you, can you, you all have access to these problems, right? If you read it, it's going to boil down to this, and I'll try to interpret in a second. This, just like before, it's going to be n over n minus 1 squared u to the fourth minus sigma to the fourth. All right. Now, read that problem once again. It is desired to estimate the variance of a random phase angle. Oh, yeah, okay. Find the number of independent samples that are required to estimate this variance with a standard deviation that is 5% of the true variance. Okay, it, okay. On bias so over here, it's 0 0.05 sigma squared squared. So remember, this is, a, this is the variance of the variance is going to have a fourth order effect on varying uh, anything on this side, like sigma will be sigma to the fourth, has to be sigma to the fourth over there, right? And some of this, I'm going to freely admit, is clumsy to word. But he's saying this. 5% of, uh, of the variance is the standard deviation of that. It means you've got to square that to get the variance. I hope that makes sense. This is the variance of the variance to get the variance that the standard deviation is given. You've got to square it. That's the reason that's, that's, K. that's the case. You all with me, class? Please read through this carefully so you can convince yourself of this. Now, on this one, it's uniform, right? If it's uniform, we could go ahead and we could say that fourth central moment, right? We could, well, it, it's, it's uniform, and I think he even gives it for the central moments. What we could do is we could find, we could take theta to the fourth power, times 1 over this, right, and integrate it from 0, or from minus pi to pi, it would be theta to the fifth, and it would be divided by 5 times 1 over 2 pi and evaluate. But in the book, I, I mean, sorry, in the PDF, I don't think it's in the book. Remember I just showed you that formula, right? And what was it? If you look there, these are central moments now, it's going to be... Um, uh, I forgot if, I, if it's in the book. I just put it on the PDF. Um, the yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is going to be delta, sorry, delta x is just the spread, but it's uh, this spread right here, delta x, okay, oh, to the n, go ahead. And then it's just over n plus 1 times 2 to the n. n plus 1 times 2 to the n, right? That's the fourth, that's the central moment for any value, right? Since it's the fourth central moment, n is four. Can you all follow me? You can prove this. You agree? So if n is four, this is really what? This is the expected value of x, or of n, yeah, of x minus x bar to the nth power. So it's a central moment for, and this is only for uniform. For this one, we can go ahead and get it. We know n is equal to 4. It's 4 central moment. So we got delta x is 1 over 2 pi. And it's going to be, sorry, to the nth power is 4. Let's see how this works out. And we take this and we get n plus 1, that's 5, to the 2 to the n. n is equal to 4. So that's 16. I hope that's right. Do you all agree with this class? Go ahead. Is the delta x just 2 pi or 1 over 2 pi? Well, the spread here is from minus pi to pi. It'd be 1 over, it would be 2 pi, wouldn't it? Oh, well, I'm sorry, I got this wrong. I'm trying to hustle through a, here. This fourth central moment, will, the expected value of Really, the phase angle main minus phase angle bar to the fourth power is just going to be delta x. I'm so sorry about that. That's 2 pi to the fourth power over 5. And this is going to be over 16, right? And what is that? That's 2 to the fourth is 16 over 16. So we're going to get pi to the fourth over 5. 
is going to be uh, the expected value of this. Now we've got to get the expected value of just uh, of x minus x, or I mean, I should say theta minus theta bar squared. So that's going to be, this would be sigma, or the sigma squared. And that's going to be 2 pi squared over 3. And this is going to be uh, 4. Right, so that's going to be pi uh, squared over three, and that means you come over here. I'm just going to, uh, since we got we have sigma squared, this right here is sigma squared. Now we can come over here and we can say that this is equal to n over n minus 1 squared u to the fourth right there is pi to the fourth over 5 minus uh, pi squared over 3 or pi to the fourth over 9 and that's 0 0.5 squared And then we got sigma is pi over 3 squared is pi to the fourth over 9. I'm just going through the motions here. You all agree with that, class? Is that right, by the way? <laughs> it's the right technique. I haven't gone through the numbers yet. Now, one of the things I can see right away is the pi to the fourths get killed, right? Can you all take it from here, guys? I'm holding you over. Now, I want you to do that one. The last one I'll do on Friday. For Friday, here's what we're going to do. The quiz will be on section 4-2 and 4-3, these problems. And I probably will ask something about the variance of the sample mean. In other words, those problems are pertinent. And then I will ask something about the variance of the variance of the sample. In other words, that kind of a question. Y'all follow me? So please do these things. I'll, try, I'm, I'll do the last one next class. And then I'm going to start in, because the last thing we're going to do is going to be the confidence interval stuff. And, it, and we're going to jump to something called ergodic functions. But this is just, we're just going to dabble with that stuff. I have to do that on Monday, too. OK. Sorry it went Wait, so long. Are we going to review on Monday, or are we going to? Yeah, we're going to. I mean, we're going to I'm going to simply on Friday try to dabble with that, give you some problems out of it, and then on Monday it'll be a review because the final is on Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Honestly, uh, for the final exam, I'll be clear about what formulas are available. And uh, I will give you, of course, the tables like I did last time. Um, I love with you guys. A lot of this is just keeping up to date. If you're familiar and you keep doing it and you don't cram, probably just renewing, I mean, going over the stuff you knew before is all you need for this. Make sure you do it well. Thank you, Jim, for bearing with me.